Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook, Strongest Thor in Marvel. Chapter 41 A young man from outside the alley ran in, helped Steve Rogers up, looked at his injuries, and then turned around and said, Thanks, buddy, my name is James Barnes, usually you can just call me Bucky, thank you for helping Steve Rogers teach the lesson. Thor was stunned, he finally understood that he was sent to 1942 by Ancient One with the power of Time Gem. This year has been a rough year for the United States. On the one hand, the German Hans offensive reached its peak, and the power of one country drove several countries to fight. On the other hand, the little devil exploded the old American's chrysanthemum at Pearl Harbor a few months ago, and the United States, which has been in the theater mode, finally couldn't sit still living. So, the loophole in the timeline happened in this period. From the looks of it, the thin man in front of him is naturally the future Captain America. This afternoon, he was once again refused to join the army. Asthma, scarlet fever, heart disease, high blood pressure. The recruiter even wondered how the poor boy survived to this day. Don't look at how bright and upright Captain America is in the movie, in fact, this guy is quite dishonest, and has tried to join the army with forged identities and times. Thinking back, at the point in time in the future, my name did not appear during World War II, so. Donald Blake, you're welcome. I hate this kind of trash who is strong but dare not go to the front line and hides in the back to do his best. Thor made a name and shook hands with them. It's not really nonsense. Seeing the scraps of paper scattered on the ground, it was the notice of rejection of Steve's enlistment. Bucky said helplessly, hey, although identification is not so authentic these days, it's a dangerous thing for you to keep forging your identity and trying to join the army repeatedly, and it's illegal. Steve pouted, disapprovingly. Bucky had no choice but to change the subject and said to Thor, Dude, there's tomorrow's World Expo tonight, the three of us go to visit together. Thor agreed, anyway, the mission has no clue yet. Comma, I have to say that the relationship between Bucky and Steve is really good. While attending the expo, he also helped Steve date two girls. Although with Steve's height and straight male attributes, it is likely that there will be no drama. Thor was wandering around, thinking about his mission ideas. There is a problem with the timeline of this era, and it is likely to involve Captain America, but he thought of one thing. It is said that when Captain America returned the gem at the end, he stayed in the 40s for the last stop, completed his date with Peggy Carter, and spent a lifetime with her. Then in this world, there will be a hidden old Captain America. But if he prevents the flickering incident, then Captain America will have no chance to travel through time and space, which will form a conflict. The purpose of meeting Peggy Carter was to verify the existence of the old Captain America. Maybe this is a time loophole. Drip, congratulations to the host for discovering the branch of the mission, the eternal secret. Complete the mission after completing all the branches. Branch 1, block the future passage of Captain America from the route, and maintain the timeline where the host is located. Branch 2, not unlocked, please explore by yourself. Branch 3, not unlocked, please explore by yourself. Blocking Captain America from crossing. So, in the timeline I'm in, the old Captain America doesn't exist. Since we want to block it from the root, we have to start with the motivation that Captain America traversed. Peggy Carter. Thor looked at Steve and Bucky not far away, and smiled, Captain America, Captain America, women are big pigs, winter soldier is your thing. I am doing this for your own good. The smile gradually changed, and an idea gradually took shape. In another parallel world, the story of Captain America has no heroine, and the only CP is Bucky. It is said that at one point, Captain America asked Bucky to help keep the ring, and Bucky put it on. Another time, Bucky was injured, but Captain America didn't hold him up like in the movie, but with a princess hug. It is said that there was a selection in the previous life, where Marvel's favorite pair of CPs were selected regardless of gender, and Dundong ranked first. All in all, a good friend and a quilt. Ah bah, it's a lifetime, Dundong is an iron friend, and Peggy Carter is like a mistress. Comma. This morning, the doctor who was examining Steve was suddenly called out at some conscription office, leaving Steve alone. Glancing at the falsification of military volunteer form, written on the wall, Steve panicked. In the past, every time the inspection was completed, it was directly rejected, and I never felt sorry for him. 
In fact, the conscription office didn't bother to take care of such a trivial matter. Is it going to be over today? This kind of thing can be big or small, if you are locked up for 10 or 8 years. Especially when a serious looking soldier drew the curtain and walked in, Steve felt that he was already cold. At this time, an old man from the Mediterranean came in, motioned for the soldiers to go out, and then had a straightforward conversation, and Steve's answer satisfied him. The old man finally said, let me introduce myself, I am Dr. Abraham Erskine, and I can give you a chance. I just need one chance. At this time, a voice sounded outside, is the doctor there? I'll sign up. Dr. Abraham nodded to the soldiers, and a blonde young man was brought in. Mr. Black, you joined the army too. Steve greeted, hey, I've passed. The result of the examination was naturally passed, and the almost perfect physical measurement data made Dr. Abraham decide to include him in that team. If the character passes the test, it may be the second candidate for the super soldier serum. The young man who came in was definitely Thor. Since you're going to help Bucky watch Captain America, try to join him on the same team as possible. He watched the conscription office where Captain America entered early in the morning, and after seeing Dr. Abraham enter, he waited for a few minutes before following him in. The physique of the Asgard people is far superior to that of mortals, not to mention Thor is a royal family, that is the body of the god who once fought Thanos head-on. Even the strengthened Captain America is no match for him. In order not to cause a sensation, he has suppressed his physical condition as much as possible. If it weren't for worrying about attracting the attention of this era itself and causing unnecessary variables, the power of thunder alone would be enough to destroy any army. Soon, Thor and Steve appeared in the barracks wearing brown military uniforms. Thor and Steve sit next to each other. Steve may still think it's nice to have a good friend standing beside him, but he doesn't mind standing next to Thor who is 1.9 meters tall, his thin body is more conspicuous. A heroic female officer walked in front of them with graceful steps. The curly hair matched with the flame-like lipstick adds a bit of charm. A rude soldier flirted with her, and was instantly beaten by her. The other muttered a few words desperately, and then lay down in less than three seconds. The recruits fell silent for a moment, what the hell, this woman is so fierce. Except Steve and Thor. The former was still in a daze stupidly, while the latter looked at her with great interest future legendary agent, Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter glanced, and immediately discovered the cutest height difference between Thor and Steve. Seeing Peggy's gaze turn, Thor gave her his trademark smirk and winked at her. This beautiful lady, I wonder if I am lucky enough to invite you to have a glass of red wine with me tonight. Seeing this scene, Steve felt as if something was moving away from him, but he didn't know what it was. He frowned, but recovered quickly. Well, what are you thinking so much about? With that time, why not think more about Bucky, he should already be on the battlefield, right? Hey, congratulations to the host for completing the task, Eternal Secret, Branch 1, blocking the future Captain America from the source, and maintaining the timeline where the host is located. In that instant, possible future developments for Captain America and Paige had been cut off. The task is very simple to complete, but the follow-up is very troublesome. Peggy Carter had a smile in her eyes, good idea. Wait for me here after training tonight, I think this will be an unforgettable night. Although the voice was very gentle, even honest Steve shuddered, and the other recruits were already mourning for Thor. Um, is it too late for me to refuse now? Just trying to get some attention, so Steve and Carter don't see eye to eye. This is a character at the level of an old lady, really not my style. Thor subconsciously ignored that he was also at the ancestor level. Okay, boys, let's talk about the date in the evening. A middle-aged officer exuding a fierce temperament came up and joked. Colonel Phillips. Peggy was the first to salute, also reminding the recruits. Glancing at the recruits, Phillips began his speech. General Barton once said that war is fought with arms, but victory depends on soldiers. We win wars because we have the best, soldiers. Quote. He glanced at Steve. What the hell? How did something strange get mixed in? Phillips felt bad for a moment, and he glanced at the expressionless Dr. Abraham. Bad old man, very bad. He tried hard to control the corners of his twitching mouth, and continued his opening remarks, 
The Institute of Strategic Science is an organization that brings together the best scientists and talents from allied countries and the entire free world. Our goal is to create the most powerful legion. The legion is it is composed of soldiers. So this selection is the selection and training conducted by this institute to train super soldiers. After a simple speech, it is training. Without any surprise, Steve won the first place in each project, the last one, although he worked very hard. On the contrary, Thor is far ahead in almost every item, almost reaching the highest record in the barracks. Phillips even suspects the guy's Superman in his underwear. After inquiring, it turned out that both of them were stuffed in by Dr. Abraham. Bad old man, slipping away. On the training ground a few days later, the recruits are training. How about the people I brought? Dr. Abraham asked Phillips. Well, Phillips nodded in satisfaction, brave, strong, flexible, and able to adapt to all kinds of high-intensity training. If you decide to choose him, I have no objection. Peggy Carter interjected. I have reservations, this guy has all the characteristics of a soldier, you should pay attention to how many times he has fought in the past few days. Oh, Miss Carter, you can't have a bad impression of him just because he dove you that night. After all, everyone knows that you kept him to deal with him. As for fighting, every Hodge took the initiative to provoke once. Then, seeing Dr. Abraham's strange expression, he suddenly confirmed in a low voice, Doctor, are you talking about that black? No, I'm talking about Steve. Phillips slapped his head. Don't tell me you're looking for an experimental mouse, even Hodge is much better than him. I even think of him as Black's addition. The doctor shrugged and said, Blake is indeed very good. In fact, if there is no Steve, I will choose him. The reason why I choose Steve is that I value qualities other than physical fitness. As for Hodge, I think his character needs to be tested. I've seen him bully Steve many times. He pointed at the crowd, and Hodge was picking on Steve, before getting knocked down by Thor. We're going to fight again. Peggy Carter cursed and stepped up to stop it. Colonel Phillips said lightly, War has never been based on convincing people with virtue, but on courage. As he spoke, he took a grenade from the item box, pulled out the insurance, and threw it into the group of recruits. Grenade. Shit. The soldiers were shocked and fled in all directions. Among them, the strong Hodge took the lead and quickly rolled to the back of a jeep. Little did he know that he had lost an opportunity forever. Among the crowd, only three people did not escape. One is Steve. He rushed against the flow of people and threw himself on the grenade, with fear on his face, but he still held the grenade tightly and shouted, Go away. Go away. The other two. Peggy wanted to rush up and kick the grenade into the nearby open space, but before taking two steps, Thor rushed up to her with open arms, threw her down, and shouted. Grenade. Lie down. The grenade did not explode for a long time, and everyone finally reacted slowly. At this time, Phillips shouted, it's an imitation. Line up, get back. Steve said coldly, is this a test? The doctor smiled triumphantly, and Phillips was finally convinced. This thin soldier has some of the most valuable and rarest qualities as a soldier sacrifice. With a bit of embarrassment on his face, he said stiffly, he's still too thin. Then he turned his head to look at Thor and Peggy who were still in a daze, and said with black lines on his face, does this kid really think of himself as a superman? It's so close, it's useless to lie down. The doctor shrugged, probably yes, it's written like this in comics. But at least, if it's a real grenade, Peggy can survive under the pressure. Therefore, I choose him as the second candidate. Quote. The soldiers obviously noticed this scene, and all of them blew their whistles to death. Peggy Carter's face turned red and pale, but unexpectedly she didn't get angry, but pushed her lightly, and said in a low voice, you, get up first. Thornton felt a pain in his egg. Just now, he saw Peggy Carter running towards the grenade against the flow of people, and he had a subconscious conditioned reflex. Dead man wow. If Steve's behavior in the original book is a small stone that can cause ripples in Peggy Carter's heart, then Thor threw in a boulder this time and set off waves, and the ripples are even more irrelevant up. Comma. Steve's performance completely silenced those who originally had objections. Why did you choose me? He asked Dr. Abraham that in his dorm room the night before the super soldier project. Because, rather than being a good soldier, I want you to be a good man. 
Actually, Steve had some hesitation. Black might be a better choice. Although he knew that this might be his only chance, he still brought it up. The doctor was taken aback for a moment, and then became more satisfied. He smiled and said, Yes, Black is indeed the best soldier I have ever seen. He is brave and firm, defying the strong and sympathizing with the weak. However, compared to you, he is too irritable and aggressive. Provocative, but his excitement when he fights cannot be hidden. The doctor joked, he gives me the same feeling as a Spartan. Definitely, as a soldier, these are not disadvantages but advantages. However, super soldier serum will infinitely magnify a person's personality characteristics. In you, humility, integrity, compassion, sacrifice, the qualities you possess are what I need most. Sounds like a night selection. Do I have to swear an oath tomorrow? Steve laughed too. Because of Thor's disruption, Steve took Dr. Abraham's car to the experimental base the next day, while Thor sat in Peggy Carter's passenger seat. As Colonel Phillips' favorite soldier, Abraham agrees to select Steve as the second super soldier after his successful trial. Therefore, Thor is eligible to visit in advance. In fact, Thor knows that with his own strength, the super soldier serum has basically no effect on him. Also, Captain America will only have one. How do you feel? Are you disappointed not to be the first super soldier? Peggy broke the weird atmosphere. Since the embarrassing incident on the training ground, she ordered everyone not to speak out, and never let it be mentioned. But facing Thor, it was still a little embarrassing. That's not true. It's Steve who participated in front of me. If it's him, I have no problem. Besides, don't you think I'm very good even without strengthening? Peggy Carter nodded incredulously. Fighting twice in three days in the barracks is not for everyone, and it's still a group of fights. Tell me about your past, what did you do before? I don't believe that such a good skill would be an ordinary doctor. Thor's fake identity is a doctor in a small clinic, and it can be found out that it is fake. It's just that in this age, most people choose to turn a blind eye. Did you see it? I used to be a hunter in Alaska, and I hunted brown bears twice in three days. Peggy Carter rolled her eyes. Comma. In the laboratory, Thor looked at Steve who was about to step onto the laboratory bench, and joked, how is it? Are you nervous? Steve nodded. It's a bit, but it's my job. He said, took off his shirt under the doctor's instruction, and lay down on the laboratory table. Seeing Steve's rib bone figure, Thor couldn't help but secretly took a few photos, waiting to show him his black history in the future. Numerous needles plunged into Steve's body, injecting the drug into the muscles, and the bench slowly closed. Howard Stark, who was in charge of mechanical equipment, turned on the power. 10%, 20%, 30%. The experimenter read out the data on the meter. The light inside the test bench became more and more dazzling, and outsiders could no longer see Steve inside. Only Thor hasn't seen it yet, and Steve is clenching his teeth to keep himself from grunting. 40% 50% An experimenter next to him added, the discipline of heart rate increased, but the vital signs were basically stable. This has surpassed all previous experimenters. Thor glanced at the government personnel next to Howard Stark. This guy's eyes were cloudy. If he guessed right, this guy is actually Hydra. It's just that all the attention is on Steve, and no one is paying attention to him. Howard thought Thor was looking at him, so he explained, it is said that the pain of 30% dose is similar to that of childbirth, and the pain of 40% dose is equivalent to broken eggs. Everyone has black lines on their faces, how the hell do you know so clearly? Have you ever had a baby? No, no, have you been kicked? Thornton couldn't help laughing, as expected of Tony Stark's father, he looked gentle, but he was actually a slut. It's a pity that he was assassinated early. At this time, the sound of the system suddenly jumped out. Drip, congratulations to the host for discovering the mission, Eternal Secret, Branch 2. Complete all the branches to complete the mission. Branch 1, completed. Sideline 2, save Howard Stark from dying at the hands of the Winter Soldier in the future. Branch 3, not unlocked, please explore by yourself. Before he had time to think about it, the dose over there reached 60%, and Steve finally couldn't help but let out a scream. Ah, 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 ah. Howard stopped increasing the dose, and Dr. Abraham asked eagerly, Steve, how? If it doesn't work, I will stop immediately. 
If this noble young man fell on the laboratory table, he would never forgive himself. Don't stop. I can stand it. Steve yelled through gritted teeth. 70%, 80%, 90%. The screams became louder and louder, as if they would collapse in the next moment, Howard stopped and looked at the doctor. The doctor asked anxiously, Steve, how is it? Is it okay? But apart from the screams, he couldn't hear other sounds. The doctor ordered helplessly, stop. Wait. Thor interrupted him loudly, he can, go on. He could see what was going on inside, and Steve still demanded to continue, but he couldn't speak anymore. So he stops the doctor from interrupting, and even uses the bonus skill from the original Loki mission. Master of Lies, when you make a statement, it is easier for the other party to believe it. To ensure success, he even threw in some black magic. This is what he learned from Frigga. Although he is not as proficient as Loki, it is enough for mortals. In the eyes of everyone, Howard increased the dose for the last time. 100%. The experimental cabin slowly opened, and a robust figure appeared in front of everyone amidst the smog. Steve who stepped off the laboratory bench, can be said to have become another person except for his head. He was originally 1.6 meters tall, but he was almost a foot taller. And the muscles that explode all over the body are simply a mini version of Hulk. How do you feel? Thor asked. It feels great, now I can play against anyone all day. There was warm applause from the audience. People came up, and no one noticed except Dr. Abraham, the Hydra spy pulled out a lighter. Abraham was startled, but before he could react, there was a, bang, explosion, and the laboratory was in chaos. Before everyone had time to react, the Hydra spy grabbed the remaining tube of serum, shot Dr. Abraham and ran away. Thor pulled him past him, out of the way, and fell to the ground. Steve ran up quickly, and the doctor shouted, I'm fine, go after me. Steve rushed out quickly, the spy just got into a car and before he could close the door, he was grabbed and dragged out by Steve, so scared that he ran away and took off his coat in an instant. Originally, with Captain America's physical fitness, he could be easily caught, but on the one hand, the newly remodeled Captain America could not adapt to his own strength, and on the other hand, he had to worry about the safety of the public, so the two chased and fled all the way. On the pier, a child was held hostage, and he jumped off the pier and got into the prepared submarine. Just when he thought he had completed the task, a pair of arms stronger than his thighs shattered the window with a, bang, grabbed him out, threw him onto the pier, and quickly jumped out to hold him down. Seeing that he couldn't escape, the spy smashed the serum into pieces and shouted. Chop off one head, and grow two more. Hydra hail. Immediately, he tilted his head and died. The surrounding melon eaters cheered excitedly. In this era, a hero is needed too much. Comma. The next day, Captain America's heroic deeds were published by major media. And another bad news came, Dr. Abraham temporarily forgot the formula of the serum due to injury and excessive shock. Phillips is annoyed that he wants an invincible army, not just one man, even though Captain America has shown his strength. After the hard-working Captain America had no choice but to have his blood sampled, he began to participate in various catwalk events and was regarded as a mascot and the best black recruit, Thor, was soon sent to the front. It was a pity for Phillips. If he had been chosen in the first place, he might be able to protect the doctor immediately after undergoing the transformation, or recover the potion. No one doubts Thor, because many people know that he is the default second super soldier. Once the plan is terminated, he will lose the most. Oh, I'm sorry, doctor. Thor murmured to himself the night before heading to the front. For him, the effect of the super soldier serum is almost non-existent, but the side effects are not small, so there is no need for him to take risks to change history. Saving Dr. Abraham is already the limit. The doctor's amnesia is naturally due to Thor's black magic. During the five years in Asgard, in addition to eating fat, he read a lot of classics and learned a few simple magic. He wouldn't let the super soldier project go ahead, even if he didn't care about the plot. The character of Dr. Abraham and Steve is unquestionable, but not everyone is so noble. Once the military masters the means to mass produce super soldiers, it will be a disaster for the world. After all, after the mustache hit the street, in a few years, Lao Mei will start another unjust war. The super soldier plan of this era should be terminated. Oh, 
How boring. Somewhere in a barracks on the Italian front, Thor sighed. It has been several months since I came here, the two sides are evenly matched, and the war has fallen into anxiety. This is also because Thor deliberately dawdled, if he was a little more serious, this would already be hitting Berlin. He's not in the mood to put in too much effort and be a Yankee war hero. Definitely, if Thor is arranged to go to the Pacific battlefield, he will definitely not mind letting the other party see the wrath of the gods. But when he thought of the poor Captain America still being his internet celebrity, he couldn't help laughing out loud. What are you laughing at? Whose head did you steal? Peggy Carter came to him and sat down. Why are you here? Thor's face hurts. Recently, many other soldiers have complained to the officer. Black is a shameless old thief who specializes in head grabbing. He often explodes the opponent's head as soon as he aims at the target, in private, giving Thor the nickname, the head dog. Thor didn't take it seriously, and if he took the head with his ability, he didn't take the white or the white. Two soldiers walked past talking and laughing, and one of them said, have you heard that the circus troupe is coming to our barracks to perform? Never mind him, it's better to drive a dozen girls. Thornton suddenly became excited and said excitedly, Steve is here. Come on, let's cheer him on. Peggy couldn't help but patted him, and smiled lightly, is there anyone like you as a friend? You are so gloating. In this era, entertainers and actors are far less popular than later generations. In the eyes of more people, guns are the romance of men. Comma. On the stage, Steve's performance did not have the expected effect. These soldiers who have experienced war are not so easy to fool. Only Thor waved his fist in the audience and shouted, Good. Good. How do I feel like I'm a street performer? Steve's face darkened. Peggy Carter couldn't help covering Thor's mouth, it's too embarrassing. Everyone in the audience didn't buy it, and booed one after another, let's go, we want to see the girl. Eggs and fruits were thrown towards the stage, and Steve hurriedly raised his shield to block them. Unexpectedly, the first time I raised the shield, it was actually facing the friendly army. Sweetheart, sign me up. The guy who spoke pulled down his pants and turned towards Steve. Steve frowned and stepped aside, replaced by a team of cheerleaders, and the atmosphere became lively. Comma. Hey, big star, you are doing well. I heard that you are a household name in China. Thor joked. Steve gave a wry smile. I can only improvise. After all, my previous audiences were kids. Brace yourself, you are America's new hope. Yeah, every time I go to a state, the bond sales increase by 10%. It's okay, at least I have something to do. Colonel Phillips even wants me to stay in the laboratory. Then do you only have these two options? The laboratory and the stage. Thor looked serious, you can do far more than that. Steve said helplessly, I've always dreamed of going abroad and serving the country on the front line. Now I'm finally here, but in this way. You need a chance, a chance to break the rules. Members don't think so. If you really obeyed the rules, you wouldn't sign up to join the army again and again. After a pause, Thor said in a deep voice, now it's time for you to be unruly. I heard the news today that the 171st Division is in Ozano and Schmidt's men had a fight, 200 people went, less than half came back. Of those who came back, I didn't see Bucky. What? Like a bolt from the blue, Steve stood up on the spot and ran towards Philip's barracks despite the heavy rain. This is the opportunity you said. Peggy Carter asked, who had been silent. Yes, superhero, shouldn't be on stage. He needs an opportunity to prove himself. What about the captives? Is there a rescue plan? Steve asked excitedly at Philip's desk. Philip sighed, and said in a deep voice, yes, that is to win this war. Where are the captives kept? Captain America was in a hurry. When the war was over, Bucky's ashes would be cold. 30 miles behind the enemy, we have to go through heavy defenses. After a pause, he said in a low voice, this is not your business. You have a performance in half an hour, go prepare, leave alone. Okay, I understand. Captain America looked determined, and he knew that it was time for him to break the rules. Comma. Inside the tent, Steve and Thor are packing their gear. Actually, you don't have to come with us, Steve said. In fact, he also knew that the colonel was organizing manpower to try to rescue, and it was very risky to go to the enemy's rear to sneak in. No, 
You don't want to be a mascot, and I'm tired of eating and waiting to die, so let's play a big game together. But it's okay, you're the one who disobeys orders, and I am coerced. He made a joke, looked at Carter at the door and said, Ms. Peggy, contact Stark for help. I heard that he is here. We need a flight crew. We can't let us run behind the enemy's rear, can we? Carter said with a dark face, I always feel that I was dragged into a thief ship by you. Comma. Stark is the best civilian flight officer, he is the only one who dares to send us here in this kind of horrible weather. On a transport plane, Peggy Carter explained to the two. This is crazy, I feel like all four of us are going to be court-martialed if we make it back alive, Stark complained, and he was definitely joking, to brighten up the atmosphere. It doesn't matter, Thor changed the topic indifferently, say, Mr. Stark, when do you plan to have a son? Your career must be inherited by someone. Oh, if possible, I'd rather have a daughter. At least the chance of becoming like me is lower. Steve asked, any problems like yours? I've always put my personal preferences ahead of the collective good, Howard added. And, son, there's a good chance he'll be a playboy like me. Don't think too much, you will definitely have a son, and he will be a more powerful playboy than you. Thor smiled wickedly. Peggy Carter was about to ask why, when the sound of guns and guns sounded in her ears. We can't go any further, let's parachute ahead. Thor arranged the plan. After you go down, immediately sneak in to save people. I'm outside, trying to attract the attention of the enemy. Captain America naturally agrees, although it is more dangerous to sneak in, but he has nothing to fear, and he jumps first. Blake. Thor was about to jump off with a big package when Peggy Carter called him, come back alive. Don't worry, I will. Jumping down, tearing open the package in midair, there are two remodeled Gatlings. What is he trying to do? Peggy Carter looked back at Howard, he must be responsible for these two Gatlings. Howard shook his head, it's not me. She suddenly understood what Thor meant by, attracting the enemy's attention, and immediately became anxious, and immediately shouted, quick, give me a parachute. Quick. No, Mr. Black told me that you must not let you go down and drag him down. At the gate of the Hydra camp, Steve looked at Thor with a machine gun on the left and right in dumbfounded, where did you find this thing? Captain, don't swear, Thor said lightly, remember what I said. I will attract the attention of the enemy for you, and you are responsible for sneaking in. Just as Steve was about to speak, Thor ran to the back of a bunker with a gun in hand, grabbed the loudspeaker and yelled, the nine-headed worm inside is coming out and dying. Gatling fires like crazy. Steve's face was covered in black lines. As expected, the Hydra soldiers were alarmed. It's hard not to be alarmed, with such a short distance and Gatling's rate of fire, Hydra almost thought that the Allied forces had already attacked. What's more, it was accompanied by greetings from the women of the other party's family. Steve's eyes were moist immediately, in his opinion, Black was dead, he was using his life to fight for the chance to save others. This guy is a noble person who is more qualified to receive super soldier serum than himself. Blake's sacrifice must not be in vain. Taking advantage of the guard's attention on Thor's side, Steve sneaked in quietly. With Thor pulling hatred, Steve, who originally had basically zero infiltration ability, sneaked in easily by relying on the skills of a superman. As soon as Steve left, Thor let himself go. With his strength, wouldn't it be easy to abuse a group of mortals? Da da da, dual-wielding Gatling kept firing. Hydra was stunned. Obviously, many of them used energy guns made through Tesseract, but they were still at a disadvantage. Is this man a devil? Obviously carrying two Gatlings weighing several hundred kilograms, he ran faster than normal people, and rolled even more smoothly. A lot of people were hiding behind the bunker, and they were blown up as soon as they showed their heads. I have seen accurate marksmanship, but they are all sniper rifles. I have never seen heavy machine guns, especially Gatling, which can be really accurate. This thing is not purely used to rely on fast fire rate and is the clip large so that the firepower is suppressed. If Thor knew what they were thinking, he would have sneered, really thinking that I threw the hammer for nothing all these years. Not to mention such a short distance, even if it is 800 miles away, you can still smash your dog's head with a hammer. Not to mention you scumbags, even Thanos can't do it, say cut off your chest, never cut off your head. 
Originally, Thor grabbed an energy gun for fun, but found that although this thing is similar to a laser gun, but without the tesseract charging, this thing can only be used as a fire stick after firing bullets. On the other hand, because most of the guards are going to fight Thor, there are a lot fewer people on Captain America, especially Thor told him some tips. Where did it come from? The guard guarding the prisoners stared at this strange guy, with one hand on the gun. Actually Captain America could have brought him down with one blow, but glanced at the cell and didn't see Bucky. He said in a deep voice, the head of state has already guessed that someone is coming to rescue the prisoners, so he asked me to convey the order to pull all these prisoners out and shoot them. The guard looked suspicious, when Steve leaned into his ear and whispered softly, Hydra hail. The Hydra guard suddenly realized, and immediately took out the key to open the cell. Steve took a look and cursed, why are there only so many people? Idiots, don't tell me you let them go. Um, a group of people were taken to the quarantine area over there for experiments. No, he is a spy. The guard was stunned by the scolding, and subconsciously replied, and instantly realized that he was being cliched, how could the insiders of Hydra don't know about the experiment? He immediately drew his gun, but Steve, who moved faster, broke his neck. Hi, I'm Captain America, I'm here to save you, everyone run. After explaining, he hurried towards Bucky. The captives reacted quickly, quickly found the weapons that had been confiscated before, and killed them all. Along the way, they found that there were not many guards in the huge base. When they rushed out of the gate, they found that Thor had already snatched a tank and was galloping in the camp. No wonder they heard the artillery fire outside. When Captain America led Bucky and ran out of the camp, the Hydra soldiers were almost kneeling. Seeing Thor's head poking out from the top of a battered tank, Steve couldn't help but burst into tears. Hi, good brother, I'm so glad you're still alive. He couldn't help but punch Thor in the chest lightly. Hey, I don't die that easily. I'm still waiting for the Howard family's son to call me uncle. Captain America was speechless, why does this guy care so much about Howard's son? How did he know that Howard would definitely have a son? In the early morning, in the US military barracks, Colonel Phillips sent a telegram to the hospital. The captain was missing in the third area behind enemy lines, and the search and rescue team found no results. Therefore, I can only declare that Captain Rogers was killed in action. After saying all this in person, the colonel couldn't hide his sad expression. This is, Carter brings news, the last reconnaissance plane has returned, and no signs of life have been detected. The colonel was very disappointed with Carter's self-assertion. He said in a deep voice, we can't do anything to Stark. He is rich and the biggest weapon supplier, but you are nothing. Carter was expressionless, with all due respect, sir. I don't regret everything I've done, and I'm sure they won't either. The colonel was furious, I gave you a chance, Agent Carter. But now the big stars in the United States are dead, and many young people are dead, including the young man I am most optimistic about, because you like him. Carter argued, that's not the case, I'm confident. Then wait until this department is closed to see if you still have confidence. At this moment, there was a loud noise outside, and the two ran out. At the gate of the camp, Captain America and Bucky walked up side by side, behind them was a tank, followed by thousands of captured soldiers. With weapons in their hands, many of them were injured, even missing arms and legs, and needed the support of their comrades to walk. It was obvious that this group had been through a tough fight not too long ago. In fact, they did not simply escape from the prisoner of war camp, but attacked from behind the German army and forcibly dug through the defense line and came back. Look, who's back? Captain America. The crowd started to applaud. Peggy Carter scanned the crowd anxiously, and when she saw Thor coming out of the tank, she was relieved. Steve and Thor walked up to Colonel Phillips, saluted, and Steve spoke. The wounded need treatment. We are willing to accept punishment. No, it's you, not us. Phillips smiled softly, that's not necessary. Turning around and walking away, walked to Peggy's side and listened for a while, and said softly, I really need confidence, your vision is right. Peggy Carter walked up to Thor and said with a smile, you're late. It's okay, the colonel said that there will be no punishment today. The straight man replied. Peggy Carter suddenly felt angry. Cheer for Captain America. 
Bucky shouted loudly on the side, and everyone responded one after another, cheering one after another. Hey, Bucky, I have a share in saving people, don't be partial. Thor went up to make trouble. Go, go, you said it yourself. Steve dragged you there forcibly. Why do you go back on your word? Besides, you usually get a lot of limelight, let's let it go this time. Bucky's protective expression made Thor couldn't help but look at Peggy Carter who was not far away looking at him. Captain America, Captain America, women are tigers, and Winter Soldier is your thing. Going deep into the enemy's rear and rescuing a large number of prisoners, Steve and Thor became heroes in the eyes of many people, and both received the Medal of Courage from the President. No one will ever get Captain America back on stage to perform, and Colonel Phillips will never let him go. While rescuing Bucky, Steve glanced at the map and basically noted HYDRA's weapon stronghold. I have prepared the best fighters for you as teammates, Colonel Phillips said. Excuse me, I also have candidates. Captain America solemnly said. Cheers. At the wine table, Thor assembled an elite team from the rescued captives. Roar Commando. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.